All right, so welcome, welcome, and good evening, or good night, or good morning, wherever you are in the world. Hopefully, you're, you're safe, you're sound. And today, we're going to talk about you know this workshop, this mini training about how to make your pitch deck effectively and efficiently. You know, and this is brought to you by the Purposeful Project, which is helping entrepreneurs for free. And this tonight's event is especially by them. And I'm running this on behalf of the Purposeful Project, whose mission is to help 10 million people to start and grow the business. You can imagine that, 10 people is a lot of people. Um, the Purposeful Project is creating this community for founders to have a safe place to go when they need help with their businesses and to ask as many questions as they like. So it's a chance for entrepreneurs to network with each other and ask for advice and get free help and you know, double, double silence on free, free help. So please join in, it's a great community. And this is why I'm here because I'm on the, on the community. And yeah, happy to help. So who am I, who is this dude, right? So yeah, so my name is Andres Urena. I'm a fellow entrepreneur. And I think the best way to describe myself is as an entrepreneur, I do a bunch of things. I've been doing a bunch of things um, for a while. I'm 36, by the way. And I'm the founder of Try Marshmallow and Try Amy. I'll, I'll go with that. And also I do Dex for Food, which is Elephant, right? And, you know, just a little <laughs> back, we'll be, we'll be back after that thing. Um, Amy, Amy is a company that we, that we started in 2020. I started in 2020. It was originally called Oscar Internet, which is still run here in Peru. I'm currently in Peru, by the way. And we help people get their Wi-Fi everywhere in their home. We sell mesh routers, which almost nobody know what they are, but they do a fantastic job, you know, helping the helping set the Wi-Fi at home. And we made this kind of no jargon brand to help people out. And uh, this is my startup. This is called Meshmallow, where we basically want to build our own hardware um, for Trey Amy, for Try Amy. And we want to turn wireless internet access as any running utility in your house. Come on, it's 2020 and we don't have kind of Wi-Fi as a running utility, it's, it's nonsense. So those are some kind of prototypes of the little pebbles we're trying to kind of place around the house and you can get Wi-Fi even in your bathtub. So that's, I think it's, that's really cool. And of course, I work in Elephant. Um, Elephant's kind of my side business, I will say that I do decks for fruit, right? I help a lot of people make their decks. This is a, a video of a, of a client that was working just yesterday. And we build decks, and we and we've had a lot of luck. I've been I've been doing this for about eight years, um, for many many different clients. We had a, a studio in the beginning. We had you know a lot of people. Then now it's kind of downsized, but it's it's better that this way because we kind of focus on this specific product. And we've helped you know for example AGP that they are one of the main providers of, of Tesla. If you didn't know that, um, startups you know build the pitch deck the pitch decks. Even corporate executives, you know, from, from mining companies and whatnot, um, present in events. And of course, other people that, that are come, kind of coming in and out from the world in the UK and the US, you know, to pitch their own companies and whatnot. And as you can see, there are many, many names because we, we help people. We help specific people. We don't help brands. Um, we like to say that we talk to, you know, CEOs, um, executives and C-levels because they, they, they need a lot of help, you know? And we've had a lot of luck again. We've, we've worked with a bunch of brands um, over the world, you know, and, and specifically in the UK with BD Sports, Heights, and a couple more. And I think it's really cool because we, we get to kind of build those kind of relationships with the people that, you know, um, build slides, right? So enough of the ad. So what's on? What has happened, right? So for what's the problem, right? For the love of God, we need better presentations. We need better text. I mean, 35 million PowerPoint presentations are given every single day. And this is no joke. It's true. It's true. There's a BBC article about that where they, they were staggering, you know, 30 million PowerPoint presentations, probably it's more now because the article is from 2018. And a lot of people use PowerPoint and they use it, you know, not very effectively and efficiently to say the least, right? So it's, it's a problem, right? It's a problem that we get really terrible slides in every part of the world, right? So what happened? In a world where we have, you know, Apple announcements and Samsung, Samsung events and startup decks that kind of look amazing, you know? Well, you've been lied to, right? Like everywhere you go, you're always told that when you, when you need to kind of start a presentation deck, you know, you immediately go to PowerPoint, right? And 
that was kind of the first thing that I was going to ask you. You know, what is the first thing that you do? Sorry about that. What's the first thing that you do, right? When you ask to make a presentation? Is it, you know, building a PowerPoint? Is it opening PowerPoint? I think it's for most of people, that's the case, right? Like we think, hey, hey man, or hey, but you have to do a presentation. Okay, open PowerPoint, grab some, you know, old slides and kind of remix them. And what, what happens with that? You remember this guy? Yeah, Sheldon Cooper. How did he talk? He talked funny, isn't it? Like he started talking really organized, really kind of sequentially, right? Like he was almost a machine. And that, that, that was kind of the, his character, right? It was, strange, it was strange, it was odd. It was part of a character. And I think you start building a deck by opening PowerPoint because presentation software forces you to think sequentially and people communicate interactively. We talk to one another, we construct arguments with one another, right? So you say something, I get it, then I can process it, give it back. And the problem with PowerPoint is that, that you know, you have to kind of imagine yourself kind of talking with them in a monologue, in, in, a, in a way that is not interactive, right? Kind of like in a sense, like I'm doing right now, but I'm trying to kind of push the conversation and whoever is, is you know, behind the camera, just trying to interact with them, right? So you don't start, you do not start, you know, a power a presentation with a PowerPoint software or for any presentation software for that matter. All right. So that's kind of the first key idea that I want to I want you to kind of keep in your mind. You don't start building a deck by opening a PowerPoint um, presentation software or any for that matter. All right. Great. So all right, man. This is a cool story. Um, now what? So what what do we do? So if, if we if we don't start a PowerPoint, where do we start, right? Okay, so this is a workshop I usually do with a lot of clients, when especially when I'm building kind of their decks from the beginning. And it's called, it's a workshop called Bain's Method. And the idea of this is kind of to, you know, get all of the post-its, all of the ideas, all of the things they want to say in a very visual way, in a wall, in a glass wall, whatever, you know? And it's very funny because I start to ask a lot of questions in terms of what they want to talk about, you know, what are the pains and whatnot. I'll, I'll go through in a minute, right? And as you can see, we have a bunch of post-its and we, we're just talking about that in terms of what they want to express in that part. And what, what I usually ask to them, you know, is kind of these questions, right? Like imagine that first, you know, that your deck is due tomorrow and what are those 10 slides you must include? You know, so you need to think about those 10 specific slides that you need to include. And top of your head, don't, don't worry about the time. Just think if it, if it was due tomorrow, what are those 10 slides that you need to get, right? What is the point you're trying to get across? And again, don't cheat, be brutally candid. And one son confronted with the next tool, which is the paint method tool. So try to brainstorm, you know, you've already done that exercise and then try to brainstorm about these questions. What is your audience? You know, um, what what audience might what 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 your audience might be thinking about you? You know, like little things. If you're, for example, a billionaire presenting to a to a to a bunch of, of entrepreneurs, then a lot of people will be in their mind thinking, yeah, probably this guy has a lot of money. He has a lot of luck, right? So try to address that, right? So what might people be expecting from this talk? What is the big like elephant in the room? Yeah, it's pun intended, right? So do any circumstances matter for this talk? You know, and or what are, you, what are you presenting? So try to imagine that, right? So in the first place, you had this exercise where you kind of you know, develop your own slides, your must be slides. And then in the other side, you have kind of this other kind of questions or pains that I like to call them. And then confront them you know, and say, all right, do my default slides kind of answer the pain questions that people might be having? You know? And this is kind of a breaking point is hugely beneficial for my clients when I'm doing this exercise because they realize something that it's you know quite obvious, but it's not obvious as we would like to, you know, and that's why we have crappy, crappy um, presentations. Is that people build decks writing what they want to say and not what what people want to hear, you know. And this is a key message, you know, because this is the second idea that I want you to hold on to because a lot of people start writing in their heads how they're going to talk, but not that they're not writing you know, for the people they want, they want to talk with, you know? So you have to need to kind of address that in your head, all right? 
All right, interesting, right? So I don't have time to do that. Any shortcuts, man? <laughs> well, of course you have a, 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 some, some shortcuts of, of sorts, but you definitely need to do the exercise if you want to kind of build a great presentation. If you want to have time, and if you want to kind of go, you know, instead of opening PowerPoint, try to open something else to kind of to work on, you know, it's, I'll present you a seven step shortcut. You know, you can do a st seven step shortcut if you don't want to do kind of the posted exercise, which is very beneficial, but I understand a lot of people might not have a lot of time, you know, but you can definitely do this short, all right? So what happens? First, you don't start with PowerPoint or any other deck software, all right? You don't start with that, all right? So step one, open email, you know? Think of anybody you have and think that your audience, you know, it's that specific person or maybe a bunch of persons in, a, in an email chain and think, how, to, how will you write your presentations specifically for them, right? And just type whatever comes to mind. Don't be organized. Don't worry about the data. Don't worry about anything. Just write, you know? Just drain your, your, drain your brain into your email, trying to think of whatever you're trying to do. All right, so that's step two. Step three, right? Cross, don't delete what you might think not be useful. And this is a, a very small trick for your brain. If when you delete stuff, you know, the things that your brain starts to do, it's to, oh, that, that piece of information that are already deleted is not important. And what would happen is that when you present, you know, back in your presentation, you know, um, and someone asks you about that thing that you deleted, your brain will go, yeah, I don't have it, you know, because you deleted it. So the thing that you need to do is to just cross it over, you know, those things that you think that they might not be useful, just cross them over. That's it, you know? Okay, step four, organize your paragraphs in bullet points in, mac in the maximum of three lines, or hopefully two is better, you know, and rearrange them so they make sense. So again, you're kind of in the mindset that you're kind of, um, writing an email to someone, you know, and that email has to make sense. So you started kind of writing down every idea that you had, start crossing over things that you won't, you won't use, and then organize them in small chunks of information that are bullet points, right? So each bullet point is, is an idea on your email. Think of like you're trying to digress, you know, trying to dissect your email into bullet points. And then, very easy, step five, each bullet is a slide. And this is your aha moment, right? So you can, you can now open PowerPoint and each and every bullet is a slide. Very simple, you know? Step six, go through each and every slide, you know, and try to think of that phrase that you wrote very conceptually, you know? And what is important to do with the concepts, you know, is to win speed. This is, this is not to present in a shorter time. Is that so your audience understands your point quicker? Make sense? So you're trying to place each and every bullet, you know, as a slide, and then try to see if there's any concept that kind of sums it up, you know, really quickly. And maybe you don't have to say it, maybe just the image, you know, talks for yourself, you know? And then afterwards, you can beautify it, you know? You can search for the da data, you know, beautify it, and of course, practice, practice a lot and present, you know? And this process is key because as you can see, what we're doing is basically the same thing as the as the post-it exercise, when you can, you, where you're kind of just of draining your brain into all the things you want to say, trying to think of someone because you're sending an email. That's why the, the, the email tool, you know, it's it's useful, and then trying to understand how it's going to be really organized, you know. And afterwards, you probably the practice it's kind of embedded on the on the process because you started writing it and then started organizing it, but you know because you had a concept and whatnot, of course, practice it a little bit so you can understand better your presentation, right? All right, so a word of advice on step six. So the step six you remember is that go through the slide and think more conceptually about you know, your concepts that you already wrote over there, right? So for example, this is an exercise that we did with a, with a client um, and you can see there that there was a policy that said agiles. We want to be agile. We want to see how agile meant. And kind of thinking about the solution of that and to kind of to be more quicker in terms of understanding what we're trying to say, you know, 
if you're thinking about this great scene about the Matrix, you know, almost everyone in the planet has seen the Matrix. Almost everyone on the planet kind of recalls this image, you know. And of course, it translates into agility, you know. So that's the kind of concepts that you need to, to search for. And you're probably going to ask afterwards, say, hey, but I'm not a creative guy. I'm not creative, but where, where, where could I search for, you know, specific concepts? And I'll get back to you and say, you know, just sit, just search for the top lifetime growth uh, movies. And then you have a bunch of references, you know, and this is the top lifetime growth movies of all time. So you can just check those, you know, and almost, a, almost every people has seen any of these movies, you know, and just try to remember a scene that's very memorable, you know, or even a meme, you know, and that could help kind of conceptualize a concept that you're trying to do. Make sense? And don't forget, you know, presenting is the art of explaining. And it's a muscle, right? And this is kind of the third idea that I want you to hold on to. You know, if you don't practice it, it'll go away. And you need to practice it. And the whole, this whole process is the whole muscle, kind of learning to understand what are, you, what are you trying to say, who are you trying to say it to, and then kind of practice, practice this message, that message when you're trying to kind of present to someone, all right? So for, let me put you an example real quick. Good morning. Good morning. This is my first product launch since being named CEO. I'm sure you didn't know that. <laughs> and it is a pleasure to host you today. I love Apple. And I consider it the privilege of a lifetime to have worked here for almost 14 years. And I am very excited about this new role. All right, again, so that's Tim Cook, you know, eight years ago when he first presented as himself as a CEO, and that was his first presentation, you know? And, and now I'm going to show you the next uh, Tim Cook after, you know, having a lot of practice and a lot of investment in terms of what he's going to present. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. And welcome to the Steve Jobs Theater. As you can tell, today's going to be a very different kind of event. We've got some really exciting things to share with you, and we're going to have some fun along the way. So let's get going. For decades, Apple. All right. You see, it's a complete change. It's not the same Tim Cook that it was eight years ago. It's completely different, you know? And that's why it's important to practice. It's important to understand that this is a muscle. You know, this is a muscle that you need to exercise every single time. And it's a huge difference. I mean, that guy, he was stiff, you know? He was as stiff as a brick. And now it's completely open. You know, he's completely welcoming. So that's a muscle that you need to train, right? So at Elephant, we want to build, you know, decks, and, and help business leaders kind of look good, you know, and help them gain perspective on their, on their central message and give them tools kind of to support, you know, and give an excellent delivery. And we have a, a, a couple of products, you know, Keynote Express, where you can send us your um, presentation deck already done and we'll kind of fix it, right? And this is, you know, a very simple process. We just, we just grab it, you know, send you a couple of designs that you maybe like, and then kind of go, go into the revision stage. And also we have the Kino Plus service where we just kind of, you know, understand the whole process that you already saw. We'll do the post-its, we'll do the, the context structuring, we'll, the, we'll do the graphic design on the side, and we'll kind of, in the end, try to structure them together, you know? And if anyone is here in the, right now, again, we have a very fast track, you know, integrated methodology where we, can build, where we can build great presentations focused on people and not brands. And we offer, this is our services, you know, we have a services for everyone that want to kind of help help them build the deck. So I'll be happy to help in that matter. Again, don't forget about kind of this four things that I wanted to, or three things that I want to kind of hold on to. The first idea is you don't start building a deck by opening PowerPoint. Don't open PowerPoint, open your email, or open a Word document. That's much more efficient, you know? Then 
people need, need to build decks writing, um, not writing what they want, you know, but understanding that people um, do decks um, writing, <laughs> writing what they want to say, not what people want to hear. Yeah. And the, other, and the other thing is presenting is the art of explaining and concepts kind of help you gain understanding. That's remember step six. And of course it's a muscle. So you need to practice that, you know? Again, huge thanks to the Purposeful Project for bringing me um, to this kind of mini training or mini workshop. I'm very happy to be, to be a part of the community. I'm very happy to, to, very happy to help. And yeah, let's stay, let's stay in touch. And this is me, send me an email, shoot me an email or, or Twitter or an Instagram. And I will help to, I'll, I'll, I'll happy answer, answer it too. Benjamin has a question though. Um, is there any common mistake people make when trying to implement your methods and how to avoid it? Okay, very good question. So yeah, so they try to jump steps. <laughs> That's it. You know, they try to kind of, open. They, it's, it's kind of a PowerPoint itch. You know, a lot of people try to open the PowerPoint first um, at whatever stage. And so be patient, don't, don't open it. Just write it down, follow that kind of very methodological step-by-step -step, um, process, you know? And then you'll have, you'll have your slides, you know? And I think the other point is when you work, when you were, when you were working in a team, you definitely, definitely want to do the post-it exercise, you know, because then it's so much clear for everyone. What, is, what are the decisions that everyone's taking, you know, in terms of the slides? If you just kind of send slides, you know, back and forth through, through email, nobody understands the logic, you know, the logic behind it. And that's important, that's an important thing, you know? So yeah, so don't, do not jump steps. And if you work in a team, please, you know, get together safely and just put the post-its on the wall and try to understand what's the logic, you know, behind kind of addressing all the different things that you need to address. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you, um, Talia. And thank you for the, for the invitation and, and the, the purposeful project. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. See ya. All right.